Hey everyone and welcome to my craft room. Um, a couple of minutes early but that's fine. Um, thanks to everyone who's watching live and everyone who watches um, the replay afterwards. Um, today, due to popular demand, I'm going to be making um, this box card um, which is a... Uh, excuse me, my um, phone's doing something weird here. That's all right. Um, anyway, which is a, a box card using the Best Catch uh, bundle, uh, which I think is going to become a, a firm favourite. I know I say that every week. Um, a firm favourite for me. Um, you don't get very many really nice masculine designs, and I think this one really qualifies as as a nice example of that. So um, it's very similar to the card I made last week which was the one using the oh, which was one using the the geared up garage but um, I'm actually going to show all the cuts and scores this time so um, you'll see how I make the actual box which is something I skimmed over quite quickly um, last week um, just bear with me my I'm not getting any comments on my on my phone on my iPad so I can't see who's watching and who's not oh here we go excellent all right oh hey who have we got angie hi hannah hi chrissy ann hi and donna hi yes i'm glad you caught me live as well although you'll be catching me live like actually live in about a week and a half how exciting is that and karen thanks for joining as well um if i've missed anyone apologies because uh, of half 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 looking and half uh, half reading anyway here we go so we'll start with this one I'll actually start the cuts and show you how to make the box as I mentioned okay so basically grab your trimmer and this is a A4 sheet of uh, early espresso um, cardstock and what we do and I'm going to put this the way that everyone can see we cut our cardstock okay guys cut your cardstock um, ten and a half inches by five inches, so five inches wide. Making sure everyone can see that. So five inches wide. So cut it there. Where's my blade? Oh. It's strange doing it backwards. So five inches wide, and. Ten and a half inches long. So there. <laughs> but oh, Donna, I don't know. Meeting me in person, I think I might be better online than in person. Anyway, we'll see. Uh, there we go. So there's uh, our piece of uh, cardstock there. Then what we're going to do is get our blade out of the way and use our scorer. And then you score along, I'm just making sure you guys can see this as well, try and straighten that up, it's making me seasick. Score it um, at two and a half inches, at five inches, so basically in two and a half inch intervals, five inches, seven and a half inches, and then at ten inches. And you should just be left with a little flap at the end that's half an inch long here. Then turn it around and score it all the way top to bottom at two and a half inches. That's your middle line there. Okay, so we've got our piece of card scored there. And what we're going to do is actually cut these lines from the top down to this halfway score here. So just lining them up again. So this one's at... Uh, turn it around do it that way so the half inch one you line it up at 10 hopefully my blades nice and sharp so down to halfway move it along next one is at that seven and a half inch one bring that down to our score line and then our five inch one down to halfway and then our two and a half inch one down to the score line there you go so you've got a piece of paper oh gosh I've put that one in the wrong place hang on 
made so many of these. I knew it would be the one I did online live that I'd muck up. That two and a half inches there. To get that little cut there, I can cover that. That's all cool. Okay, so we've got our box made. Okay, so we basically just cut off the top section of that little tag and you're basically left with your, your gluing tag there. So I'll just put that aside for the minute and while I've got my trimmer out, I'll cut the DSP. So each flap of your card has a panel of DSP, as you can see there. So I'm using this one here, which is more of a chocolatey colour. Which side to use? This is the DSP from the um, wood textured 6x6 designer series paper, and there's a lot of really nice earthy colours there. So, okay, so to have the right size DSP, you basically uh, it's going to be 2 and 3 8 square, just a tiny touch smaller than the 2.5 inch um, panels. And you need um, you need basically four of those. I'll just see. My goodness, there are thirty-five p. How does that work? Did somebody share? Oh, thank you, Angie, pointing that out to me. Thanks for sharing, guys. I think that's about the most I've ever had. Welcome, everybody. Um, and there we have. We'll take that one so we've got a square this one here I'm actually going to leave longer so this one would be two and three eighths of an inch long and whatever the balance of the size of the DSP is probably about four four inches there so there's the three and I'll show you why I do that shortly although you might be able to work it out I also while I've got my trimmer out I also need the brackets that I'm going to put the decorations on so I need two what, what I call brackets and so for this size card, since it's two and a half inches wide, you need your brackets at, say, three and a half inches. So you've got a nice half inch tag. My youngest has just driven into, the, driven, into the, driven into the driveway, so he'll come and interrupt me. Okay, so what I'll do is three and a half inches here. There, so then I'll score this piece. And if I'm really fast at this, uh, please forgive me, guys. I've got a, a blog with this one coming, so you can always get the directions from there. As I say, I do make a fair few of these boxes, so I probably am a bit a bit speedy. Okay, um, so this one, and I'll just cut this in half. So that's it about... It's not an exact science with these. You just basically you need two of these little... C brackets if you guys can see that there so that's there so those two of those uh, I think that's all the cutting I need to do I can always bring it back in if I need to do a bit more okay so let's assemble our box oh, hi everyone who's watching um, from all over the world by the looks of things so the biggest audience I've had I'm a little bit nervous now anyway so we're making all these folds just folding them all um, like this just to get, make our box and we're going to add a little bit of glue to this little flap that we've made here so just add a little bit of glue there hey Sammy He's gone to um, that swimming thing. I'm just on a video, so you might just want to close that up for me. I'll talk to you in a bit. Forgive me, everyone. That was my youngest. Okay, so we've formed that there. And what I'm going to do is grab my bone folder and score those edges. And then score that as well. So turning it the other way. And there you have your box there so that's the start okay so these side two go down and the front one goes down and there we have the basics of our our box there cool so we might now attach our DSP now as you remember I've got three panels that are two and three eighths of an inch square and each of those are going to go on here 
and the one that I've got that's slightly longer I put at the back now because the one at the back is forming the background I often like to have that a little bit longer so you don't see a gap um, you see at the end of the paper at the back there that's just a personal preference thing uh, so that's uh, that's cool so we'll just get some glue and we'll glue those on I'll glue that back one first just to that's the panel that I've made the boo-boo on the cutting in so I'll cover that over first so let me just put that one there so you've just got a little bit of your early espresso peeking out around the edges like a normal normal panel of a card so there we have that one and I'll put the side ones on everywhere as typically popping these on here and then once we've got these on we can get to the fun bit the actual stamping and decorating so there you go for everyone who asked me for instructions on the box that's basically a box card or at least what I'd call a box card I've heard them called cards in a box or pop-up cards but um there's lots of different variations on them, of course, different widths and heights and um, all that sort of thing. But this one, I think, goes well with this particular stamp set. Okay, so there's our box. Hi, Kathy. Thanks for joining me. Um, hi, Christy. Yes, that would be lovely. Thank you. I'll talk to you later. Okay, so there is our box. So I'll just pop that aside. So that's what we're going to decorate. Um, as I said at the beginning, this is the um, Best Catch uh, stamp set. And so what I have already done, just to chop, cut down the time, is I have stamped and cut out with, my, with the um, framelits and my Big Shot um, the various elements there. Am I missing one? Where's my hat? There's a hat here somewhere. There we go. So I think it's all fairly basic colouring in, but what I think I'll do is show you the um, the fish first. I don't know if he is a salmon or a trout or something like that. Hi, Roz. Thanks for joining me from Canada. Wow. I'm from Florida. And Tracy from Texas. Great. Thanks for joining me, guys. Okay, so here I have our blends, of course. Wonderful blends. Um, and the, the uh, fish whatever fish we've decided he is, maybe a salmon or something, I have coloured using the combination of those, these three colours. So that's our um, mossy meadow. That's a light mossy meadow, a light pumpkin pie and a dark petal pink, which I'm not sure whether that one's retired or not. Somebody probably remind me. But anyway, any pink that goes with the pumpkin pie would be fine. It's just used for shading really. So with our Mossy Meadow, I've given him a sort of a dark back. So you can just watch me colouring in. Apologies, it's as exciting as watching paint dry. But anyway, so I'm just going to give him a green sort of back here. And all his fins I'm going to do in the Mossy Meadow. Um, so this fin here as well. And this little one back here. This one in here. Then I'm going to I've just got to remind myself where I took that. Then I just give him just the very top. You actually see with this stamp set that there's actually a fair amount of shading um, on the on the image anyway. So I'm just where it's shaded the darkest. I'm just going to put the mossy meadow as well. And uh, leave it's got he's got lots of little beautiful speckles on his back, so I'm leaving those as well as I can at the moment and take the green all the way under his just faintly under his back there 
and then under his chin as well just with the natural sort of tummy of him there and bring that around and just that little part there which is the upper part of his tail there as well so that's all the green I have done on him there okay so that's his front and his back then with our pumpkin pie which is the light pumpkin pie just basically following our green all the way under there and bringing it onto his cheeks fish cheeks do fish have cheeks I suppose they do um, and then tucking it up under the green the mossy meadow in here so I'm just basically taking that pink all the way around or oh, pumpkin pie it's more of an orange isn't it and uh, do his tail and um, under here okay so just to give that a final little bit of shading I'm using the petal pink just trying to keep uh, no it, oh okay oh well whatever pink you like I'm just giving him a pink belly and at the same time I'm sort of blending as we do with our glorious blends blending um, that uh, pumpkin pie the edge of that pumpkin pie to make a nice forgive my noisy pen to give it a nice gradual feeling okay and then I'm going to give him the pink the very light pink on his dots as well so he's just got some dots on his back So there is our fish. He's quite cute, I think. Quite sort of natural. You can sort of imagine him flopping around a lake somewhere, doing fishy things. So anyway, there's our fish. So I'll put him aside for a second. The rest of our little images are fairly basic. Um, our bag, our big basket here, I've actually done in brown, in the bronze. I'll just do that. So just the the woven or the um, basket weave parts of the basket I've done in in this bronze blend. I haven't done these pre-done these. I sort of didn't anticipate um, the uh, the number of people that will be watching. So I have have um, left these all blank. Normally I'd colour them before. I start but anyway just bear with me do them as quickly as I can okay so there we go so that's one there and then just to highlight the trim of the bag and I don't think I got it out I'm using the uh, light cake crumb there we go just for the trim of the bag just to give it a bit of detail and for this little pouch at the front. Okay. In there as well. I thought give it a little metal clasp. A little metal clasp there in, in the grey. This is in um, light smoky slate. So there's our little basket. Pop that aside as well. The hat I've done just straight um, mossy meadow. I'll do that there. There we go. Just straight there. Good thing with this stamp, as I said, it does all its own shading because it's got the shading already in the in the in the stamp itself. This little fly, this fishing fly. I thought from the flies I've seen, they are quite. Some of them are quite bright to catch the fish, so they can be seen underwater. So I thought we'd give it some nice, bright, dark pumpkin pie um, feathers on it there. Not that I know any fly fishermen, but I have watched some fly fishermen 
television series when there's nothing else on telly. And then I've got my Granny Apple Green, I think it is, yep. Just to do these very fine little little cords here. So he's got a nice bright fly. And I just colour in that middle bit there with the with the grey, with the smoky slate. Cool. There you go. So there's our fishing fly. So last but not least is our fisherman. Now I didn't know what to do with him. I thought, well, I'll leave him black and white because he is sort of sitting up in the shadows. So, um, so yeah, salmon pink. Yes, it is look a salmon pink, Janice, Janice has said. Um, I didn't know whether to leave him black and white because he's sort of in the shadows in the distance, but I thought, no, he needs a little bit of colour uh, or he'll disappear into the distance. So his water that he's wading in is dark Bermuda Bay. I'll just do that up to his gummies, gum boots, Wellingtons, whatever you like to call them. Okay, um, I've given him. Uh, I think I gave him a. You just go wild. You know, pick whatever colours you got that you like, guys. Gave him a mossy meadow hat, basically to link into the hat that I'd already done. Gave him some blue jeans. So just colour those legs in there. Uh, did the same bronze colour in his little backpack. So I mean this is quite dark so really you're not seeing a lot of the colour. It's just more of a hint of colour I suppose and on the parts of the stamp where it's not so dark in the, in the um, tuxedo black. And then I thought I just gave him a green shirt there cool so that's just a hint of color on our fisherman just so he doesn't disappear into the into the wood grain of our of our card okay so we've got all our components there all colored in okay so what we'll do is we'll assemble our card now so here's our here's our box that we've done that seems to have dried off nicely and we've got our sort of um, brackets that we've done for failing of a better word um, so what we'll do is we'll decorate those so anyone who's seen my videos before know that I attach for my box cards I attach using clear acetate and you can buy clear acetate obviously but um, my hint is because I use such a lot of it I actually just run um, empty uh, laminating folders through my laminating machine which um, you buy laminating folders by the hundreds and they're quite cheap um, it always seems to be quite economical and um, they you know they're lovely firm um, sort of rigid um, clear acetate okay so let's um, get him together we might pop our fisherman on first and he's actually just going to go straight onto the back there so he's in the background just a little bit of glue on him and I sort of like the way this one, um, because he's a little bit wider than, than our box. So I just put the glue on the fisherman himself and a little distance along his, his, uh, his fishing, fishing um, line. And then the rest of it actually sits off the edge of the card, which I think gives it a nice effect. Here we go. I'm going to pop him there. So he's right on the card, right on the very edge, and his fishing rod, his fishing line is over the edge, which I think adds a bit of interest um, to our card. Just watching the numbers there. Okay, so he's on, so we can pop him back out of the way. Okay, so we've got our two brackets. We've got one for the front and one for the back. So our, our salmon, yes, let's call him a salmon. Our salmon is going to go on to the um, middle, the, the back one. So I just cut a tiny piece of um, clear plastic. Make a lollipop of our fish. So put some glue on there. And stick that onto our fish like that. So he's basically just can't see it behind him but he's there 
as you can see, is ready to mount. I might let that dry a little bit. And we'll do the same thing to our other elements. So I've got our oops, glue everywhere. Got our basket, so I'm do the same thing there. Just a little bit of glue on the top of our clear plastic. Pop that on our basket back there. And then okay, so then I've got his his hat sort of you know, casually thrown on the top there. If he's anything like the fisherman in my life, I think lots of things get to casually thrown everywhere. So just pop that there. It's like he's just stepped back inside from a day fishing. And then the rather out of out of uh, perspective, it's a lot bigger than it would normally be, our fly. I've just got sort of um, sort of casually leaning up against there. I'd like to see the fish you catch with a fly that size. I'll just pop that there just so it looks like it's leaning off the side of our basket. There we are. So that's our that's our front um, our front uh, uh, decoration. Okay so let's see if our salmon's yep that's nice and dry. <clears throat> so <clears throat> our fisherman is on this left hand side of our card so I'm going to mount the salmon on the right hand side so he doesn't get too much in the way so that's our, our uh, bracket will go in there like that this can get a bit fiddly <clears throat> excuse me I'm losing my voice it can get a little bit fiddly so just bear with me while I get it into the right position so basically we're going to put him somewhere like that but I'll pop the glue on and then we can I can fiddle him around where I want him there we go. I'm going to guesstimate that he's going to go there. So just leave him there. Oh, keep my finger on it till it dries a little bit. And then our bracket will go in. I'll just move that so you can see it will go in like that. The back bracket I always leave a little bit higher just to give a little bit of perspective and then so you don't have to, you don't lose everything when you put the front one in. So I'm only going to put glue on the, say, bottom third. Of this one because from experience I know that that's about as high as I'm going to have it. I'm going to pop that one in. Ah, that's not wide enough. Excuse me guys I'm going to have to cut another one. I've obviously mis, um, I've miscalculated the, the numbers there. I'm just going to have to cut another one. It's about half a centimetre. I must have quite cut it um, Two and a half, three and a half. I must have cut it three inches rather than three and a half. Anyway, bear with me, it won't take a second. Oh, you know what I've done? I've done it that way instead, haven't I? Yeah. Silly Billy. Right. The joy of live videos, everyone. You all probably realise that. I hope. Okay, let's see that that fits in better. Yes, that's it. That's better. As you can see it sort of holds itself in. The others were just far too small. Anyway, let's do our fish again. Apologies for that. As I say, I do have these cards in my blog if you want the um, the more perfect version of the um, of my instructions so I'll just pop that glue on this one just on the bottom half doesn't want to stay there there we go and we push that in there so the important thing is I say in all my videos where I do these is test that it folds flat before your glue, your glue dries there's nothing worse than finding that you've put your brackets in unevenly and because of that your card won't fold and then you can't get it in an envelope so always just fold it flat and push down where the um, where the glue is just so it forms a, a good seal and because our glue is so wonderful 
that you move slightly before it uh, before it dries completely. You can uh, do those little fine adjustments just so that everything folds and uh, nice and everything folds correctly. Okay, so there's our fish in the foreground in front of our fisherman. Um, okay, so one last one is our little hat and um, basket. So the fish is the fisherman's on the left, the fish is on the right. So I'm going to put the hat and everything more to the left just so it doesn't cover everything over behind it. And then, oop, pop that on there. So you can see you can, with the acetate, you can go right up so you don't actually have to um, you know, cover over any of your card or any of your, you can um, have your decoration shown to their full extent. So I'll just let that dry a little bit. Now this one's going to go all the way, this bracket's going to go all the way flush with the box so that the foreground decoration is lower. So I'll pop some, just get that in the right, so, so it looks right there. So as you can see, our, I might actually put that a little bit higher than flat. Um, so we can see all our decorations are in their, in their glory, so to speak. Okay, so some glue on this one. And pop that in as well. Evenly as you can by eye, just all the way down, everything square, and then we'll have a test fold before everything dries. There we go. So just there we go, force it down and the other way as well. And the glue moves slightly so that everything is square. Just excuse me, a little bit of glue there, just with a wipe. Okay, so there is our box decorated. What does everyone think about that? I think it's quite cute. Uh, perfect for a, a fisher person of whatever gender. Cool. Okay, so, just excuse me, I've got some glue on my hands. Just use my um, embossing buddy, I'll just get the the stickiness off my hands there it's a good thing when you're not doing embossing it's very handy now with this card here I've just put our there's a couple of in our um, in the framelits there's a couple of fish just uh, just plain sort of silhouettes of fish and I've done that with the and then I've done a, um, a stitch circle with the it's your day from the from the stamp set there this time I thought I'd do something slightly different still got our fish our one there and there's a little one here as well but I've also cut out out of mossy meadow there's a um, really cool um, bulrush I suppose it'd be bulrush um, image as well so I thought I'd use that because I hadn't used it yet um, all the reeds and the bulrushes themselves are all the same color so I thought I'd like those ends to be um, black assume that's just something a little bit different or brown a um, bit different to the the color of the foliage so what I thought I'd do is just grab my bronze um, blend and just simply color that in so that there's a slight difference between the foliage and the and the actual flower of the plant so there we are so it's something there so what I thought I'd do is just attach that. That front panel just begs to be decorated. So I thought I'd pop that bulrush there. And it's pretty cool as well because it sort of pops over the top of the, of the panel so it gives it a bit of effect as well, a bit of interest. So just a bit more glue all the way up here and on a little tiny bit on those stems just because they are going to be sort of sticking up slightly. And I'll pop that on that front panel. There we go. A bit like that. And I 
thought we'd pop our fish. I still like our fish, so I will um, persevere with them as well. And they can be sort of swimming around in the in the rushes. And one here and one here. Right, I'll put the um, put the circle in first. So that's a, the smallest of the stitched circles, and it fits that sentiment perfectly. So here's our. Oh, I haven't put the stickers on that yet. Apologies, I haven't put the stickers on this particular set yet. But anyway, line it up. Get my memento black. So I don't know. I might have to ask you guys what you think. Do you think we just put the fish on and leave the sentiment off? Or do we go with the sentiment as well as the fish? Or just the sentiment? Actually, I quite like that by itself. Now I look at it. I could put the sentiment elsewhere. But I quite like that just as an artistic frame of mind. What do you guys reckon? I'll wait for a couple of minutes and see what everyone says. You're going to play with this one today, are you, Michelle? Yeah, no. I don't know about you, but I hadn't bought it for the longest time. I put it off. Didn't think I liked it, but now I've got it, I actually. I can't think of anything else. Just the fish, yeah. Jan Janice says just the fish. Margaret says without. Oh, yeah, we're getting some votes for without. Let's do it that without and just have that there. Use that circle some other time. And let's pop our fish on. Actually going to let that fish's tail overlap a little. Oh, hang on, let's see. Folds. Yeah, that's right. The thing with these cards is you've got to make sure if you let something overlap that it's not actually overlapping to the point where it's not going to fit in your envelope anymore. So let's put him there. But I know that when I fold it, his tail is tucked in. So that's all right. It's going to go into the envelope fine. So leave his tail off a little bit. And then his little friend can pop in here as well just down here he'll have to stick his nose in because he will overlap the edge if I overlap him there yeah see so he has to be flush there but his friend's tail can overlap a little bit because that's the way it's going to go into the envelope okay so that's that the front done um, so what I generally do with these, because people usually say to me, oh, where do I write? Because obviously they don't want to write on the card, the front of the card itself. Um, so where do they write? I had somebody write up under here once, which wasn't very successful. Um, but what I actually do is I put a panel of Whisper White on the back and uh, people are supposed to write on that. So just bear with me and I'll find a panel of Whisper White. Bit of a scrap. Um... So basically we want that to be the width and the whole height. So it's going to be just under five inches, so four and seven eighths, and just shy of two and a half inches, so two and three eighths. There we go. Pop that on the back, and actually I'll stamp, because I need a sentiment somewhere, I'll stamp that. So it's your day. I'll stamp on the back. So just down in the corner there, I think would look okay. There we go. And I will glue that onto the back of our card. glue everywhere again. So just onto the back there. And that one is ready for its lucky Fisher person recipient. There we go. There we go. So it folds flat so it's a this is a what would it be? Ten centimetre? No six centimeter square envelope that's just a commercial one or you could use your envelope maker to do that and as you can see it fits perfectly in that size as well uh, okay so um <clears throat> that's my box card i hope you guys really enjoyed that um quite a popular design it's got stuck there 
uh, quite a popular design. Um, as I say, I've got a video up from last week where I made a similar thing with the geared up garage bundle, which was cool as well. Um, but I think that's a really special, special card for a special occasion. So anyway, I'll head off. I've got some exciting things to do. I've got to get ready for um, on stage in Auckland um, in a week and a half. If anyone's watching and uh, are going as well, come up and say hi. Um, lots of preparations still to do. I've got to try and find my passport and, uh, and try and find some clean clothes to pack away. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching everybody who watched. That's really great. And um, I will catch you all um, probably after Auckland on stage. Okay, bye.